Hello everybody, I'm Stefan, the developer of the Postpay Counter and Postpay Counter Pro plugins. And in this video, I will show you what are the features of the Postpay Counter Pro and how you should use them. So, first of all, make sure that you have a uh, Postpay Counter free version installed, at least version 2.1. You can see it in the upper right corner in the options page. If you don't have at least version 2.1 active, it won't work. Now, what I've done is just that I've FTP uploaded the Pro version in my plugins folder and then I've activated it. Then, go to the options page and scroll down to the end where you will see your new box license status. Paste your license key here and submit. Now, I just reload the page and all the Pro options will show up. So, as you can see, License status is saying that my license is fine and working well. I can deactivate it, but I won't do it now. And I get the new Google Analytics box, a couple of permissions, uh, the currency symbol, and in the counting settings, as for visits, I have Google Analytics as visits counter. Uh, now, let's start with Google Analytics. Uh, Postpay Counter Pro is able to use the data from your Google Analytics account to pay per visit. Now, uh, remember that the Postpay Counter Pro is not a visits tracker. It won't put your tracking code anywhere in your blog. You will have to get a separate plugin to do that. For example, Yoast uh, Google Analytics for WordPress that I will link in the description. The Postpay Counter Pro is only able to take those data from Google Analytics and use them to compute payments. This is very important. So what you do is you set is you check the use Google Analytics and you save counting settings. Then you go to the box Google Analytics and you click on Authorize Plugin. You will get this new uh, window you will have to choose the account that holds your uh, analytics account and uh, grant the authorization that will be asked, which is basically only analytics data. Then you copy the code that will be given and you paste it here in the same box, in the very same box, and you submit. Then you will have to choose your profile that holds the data for this website. So now I'm thecrown.org, so I will select thecrown.org and submit again. At this point, Analytics is set up successfully and the page will be reloaded automatically. So just wait a couple of seconds and I get uh, this new view in which I can revoke plugin authorization for example, if, I, if I'm going to uninstall the plugin or if I just want to set up uh, with a different profile or whatever. And then I can choose whether I want to use page views or unique page views. Now, uh, unique page views are really... Now, uh, the difference between page views and unique page views is quite easy. Basically, it means that if you are looking at a post and you hit the refresh button, uh, it gets logged as two page views, but only as one unique page view. So it's really uh, up to your needs, up to your payments habits to, to define this. Uh, remember always to save options if you change that. Now, uh, update Google Analytics data is quite useful because it allows you to uh, pull past data. From this point on, the plugin every day will check for new data and uh, build up the total visits that a post gets. But if you want to start the counting back in the past of, of a month or two months or just some days, this is the function for you. For example, suppose that I want to get visits for the past 30 days. I just leave 30 and I submit and I will get uh, visits data for the past 30 days. Now, for example, if I go to stats, I go in my own profile and I can see that visits are here. So in the last 30 days, I got these views for these posts. Now, uh, if I want to get some more data, some data for, 
father in the past time I said to, to 300 days, it's always days, and go back to stats and see how it changed. It changed quite dramatically. You can see that uh, visits really increased. So, for example, we have this almost 3000, so it's really up to your needs. Or otherwise, you may just, uh, you know, leave it to zero or never touch this feature ever so that um, your visits will be zero from the moment you start the plugin and then every day the, po the visits for every post will be taken and added to the count that, um, that slowly builds up the total up to the day. Uh, enough for analytics. Now uh, let's go to the currency symbol to display, it's quite easy. This symbol gets appended to all payments in your blog. So if you're paying in USD, you should probably set it this way so that people can't complain that uh, your blog is showing stats in euros but you're paying dollars and you know it's really only for that uh, matter because then the, you don't have the ability to pay directly from the plugin so uh, it doesn't really matter. You can see it changed the way it, it looks. Now, as for permissions, you have four more permissions here, which is users can see payment history, well, uh, which allows users to see the log of past payments, a feature that we'll introduce in a moment. User can delete payment history records. Then we have user can mark posts as paid, which uh, basically puts to adds a new payment history record and you have users can delete sets of CSV files, uh, which allows users to download and export stats as CSV files, so basically Excel files. It's anyway, it's quite clear from the tooltips on, on the right. You can just check and, and get a glimpse of what's going on. But anyway, what's more, impo what's more important is the features themselves. Now, uh, I've given users all the permissions that are possible, but you may want to leave like uh, marking posts page, deleting payment history records blank, and then personalizing the admin user to give them to, to grant them those permissions or give them a user by user because they're quite intra important permissions. And then if we go to the stats, a couple of new things will show up, which are the payment field here, pay and the payment history. Now, due pay is really computed uh, basing on the payment history. If you open the payment history, you will, you will see that I have already paid this user one euro, one dollar fifty-five, one forty-five, but anyway, there are various records. And these records contribute to uh, populate the field due payment. Now the due payment is really only the total payment here on the left minus the payment that you have already given them. So pay history really conditions, influences this due payment is very important. That's the reason why uh, it may not be so wise granting normal users the ability to uh, delete payment history records. But anyway, um, suppose you check all these posts to be paid and you click on mark selected post as paid. This will trigger a confirmation with all the details of what you're doing and if it's fine you can go on and confirm the payment and if everything's fine you will get this confirmation message. Now if you go to a payment history of a post you will see that you've just given a payment right at this moment. You see today 1488, which was the total payment, this ID, this ID will be the same for all the posts that you've bulk paid now. The transaction ID is only once, it is only one for the whole, uh, you know, bunch. And here you can see all the details of what you've paid, how much you've paid and everything. If you want to delete a record because you mistakenly paid it or whatever, you can just delete this record, confirm, and it will go away. 
So now if I refresh, all the posts will have a due payment of zero, except the one of which I just deleted the payment history record here. It is the only payable one because all the others are fine. There is also the export to CSV here in the upper right, which will just download you a CSV file that will, you know, show up as you expect it. Now, finally, the latest feature that as for now the Postpay Country Pro gives you is the ability to show stats in a static and public page through a handy short code. Now, the short code is just PPC, and this is the result. You can uh, specify an author, you can specify a time start, a time end, and you can also exclude some columns that you don't want to show. For example, uh, here, I'm missing the publication time and the post ID columns. Uh, you find all the information to set the show code up in the official page in the frequently asked questions. So I guess that's all there is. You can always ask for support or new features just in the official forum, which is here, support forum, and then post pay to pro. Uh, I will try to answer as soon as I can, though keep in mind that I'm in Italy, so there may be some time zones differences. But he, really, I'm here to help. Or oh, if you just want to go ahead and buy the Pro version and then you decide that it's not really what you need, that you don't like it, I can really refine you and everything. So, uh, really, feel free to try and, uh, and if not, I can refine you in a week or please not more than a month because otherwise it's really like you've bought it and, and you're happy with it. But yes, for any problem, don't hesitate to contact me through the support forums or the contact me form on my blog. Uh, so uh, have a nice day. Bye.